Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. And I am Tiffany, Liquid Enthusiast. And welcome to episode 28 of Beer Nuts the Podcast Link Up Series, the final week of Series 5 of Link Up. What a series, Tiffany. What a series it has been, <laughs> and I am very excited about this one. Yes. it's. Uh... I'm excited about them all. Yes, of course we are. But you know, I love everybody. Of course. But I'm very excited about this one, too. I, you're allowed to be. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's been a, been a real great series. We had you know six fantastic breweries from uh, Quebec and Ontario delivering phenomenal beers. Like We've never had even an average beer. I feel like all the beers have been never, no. freaking fantastic. We all have amazing fantastic. partners who are excellent at their craft. Absolutely. So uh, this one's really good. This is a brewery that uh, when I got into beer, they were very uh, instrumental in continuing my interest in Canadian and specifically Ontario craft beer. Uh, legendary brewery, which of course for us as you know creators and now you know the co-founders of Link Up, it's even cooler to have these breweries that we were drinking in 2011, oh, yeah. um, which even is a fraction of their journey because they've been around for like 35 years at this point. But, um, you know, it's cool to come back and be able to be like, hey, man, this, this company's still around and, and thriving as well as, you know, interested genuinely in these types of uh, activities. Yeah. So with that, guys, please welcome Denise and Cole from Great Lakes Brewery in the building. <laughs> welcome, Legends. How you guys doing? Good, good. Thanks for having us, guys. We're so excited to be chatting with you today. Likewise. Such a pleasure. Appreciate you both uh, taking the time to to hang out, and of course, to you know, we, we've been talking for for months about uh, yeah. doing all of this, so it's nice to see it all <laughs> come, come to, to fruition. fruition. Yes, oh, well, look at that. Yeah. Vibes. <laughs> so before we get into anything else, uh, of course, we will crack. It's beer time. Yes, <laughs> Let's, woo, for talking the last few minutes, I've been excited about this. Oh yes. So tell us about this uh, gorgeous black and yellow can that uh, you are holding there. Yeah, so this is our uh, Link Up, a New England XPA. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let Cole be the yes. one to explain to you about what this yeah. beer is. Yeah, so uh, with this beer, uh, an XPA, it's kind of a unique style. It's uh, something that's a cross between... Uh, an American pale ale and an IPA. And uh, with this one, uh, we uh, actually, uh, this this style is actually popularized uh, initially by Cooper's, who is a Australian brewery. So hey. you mentioned like, hey, it's a Aussie beer. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so with this one, uh, we basically took a New England pale ale base um, and we actually used whole leaf hops with this one. So you'll find with the Ooh. flavor from those hops, uh, it becomes a lot more uh kind of fresher tasting and it preserves a lot more of like the delicate flavors that are lost when you would typically pelletize the hops so uh we did that at the end of the boil um and uh you know running the beer through it so it was a little bit cooler so once again kind of preserving that flavor and really trying to extract the most out of those hops as we could um and then uh so that's the new england uh pale ale side uh but to kind of infuse a little bit of that uh ipa cross we dry hopped it with a ton of citra uh, kind of to the, the levels uh, that you would an IPA uh, to kind of bring in a lot of that flavor. Yeah, it smells okay. amazing. It, it's yeah. super aromatic. Did you say, excuse me if um, I missed that, did you say the hops? Yes. The uh, citra it's, in the uh, end and the... Whole leaf citra. A lot Holy of citra. Ah, <laughs> citra Very on brand for Great Lakes. Oh, Oops. yes. <laughs> A pleasure. Cheers. 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 Get Cheers, that in here. <laughs> Glorious. It's yeah, um, it's really yeah. yeah, it's super it. perfect for summer. It's only yeah, four point four percent, so it's like a great, great summer crusher. Um, oh yeah, for sure. The, it's definitely got a, a great malt profile. It's not over the top, but the aromat, like Tiff was mentioning, like as soon as you crack the can, it just kind of like hits you, which obviously yeah. you want. Yeah, you get a lot of that like dankness, especially from the the whole leaf hops. It really kind of brings forward a lot of that kind of fresh greenery coming through. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um. It's obviously you're 4.4, so it's not heavy. Um, 
which is great and i think it truly i mean obviously i i'm from australia but i i got into beer here i'd had xpas there every time i go back and i always thought what is this strange style that you're all drinking but <laughs> from the ones i have had this is this is on style and typically they might not be as um like may, maybe they don't do as many new england ones at least the the bigger more popular ones mm. so i was really fascinated with that sort of twist and you know giving it that uh that dry hop you kept it maybe authentic with the with the whole yeah. Give them that dry hop to give it a bit of the haze and to, you know bring some of that juiciness of uh, that glorious citra. <laughs> yeah, this one really features it quite a bit. Oh, very much so. And obviously, you know, all of you, if people don't know, there's a whole range of beers now. Um, I remember Karma Citra, I think might have been the first. Oh, yeah. One. Yep. And yeah, then, that was actually uh, one of my first IPAs that I got into. So, yeah. uh, Hell yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal beer. Now there's a whole series of citra beers that you guys are doing with some with a cool pun in the name, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we released a Karma series. So we're doing okay. um, a Karma with every different hop. So we've got Citra, Cryo, Sabro, Simcoe, and Carmageddon, which is a double IPA. Yeah, just kind of front everything. I was yeah. joking that we should have done Car uh, Karma Chameleon as well. Yeah, that would be so good. That would be so good. What do you reckon that would be? Wow. <laughs> Could be anything. Could be anything. I love it. Oh, the main question I had with this was why an XPA? I've I've probably only ever seen one other in Ontario that I was aware of, and that's kind of really it. We just did a collab co coincidentally at the same time with a brewery in Quebec, but they're the only ones. Thank I've... you, I'm the partners. Oh yeah, the, uh, partners yeah. in Link Up. <laughs> yeah. Um, coincidentally, because we planned that obviously months ago as well. So when I saw this was an XPA, I was like, hell yeah! So like, it's absolutely a, a, a you know a rare yeah. treat for Ontario drinkers. So where did the yeah, idea totally. for this come from? I mean, so we, uh, as a brewery, you know, we're known for a lot of our IPAs and we try and kind of keep a nice diverse uh, kind of suite of different uh, ways we can kind of dip into all of those different styles, right? Uh, XPA, uh, we've done it before with our uh, Citra Diction actually, which is this, this oh, recipe was yeah. heavily inspired by as well. Um, uh, but uh, it's really kind of playing within that space of being able to kind of blend the styles and kind of, uh, you know, bring a little bit of highlights of something and something else and bring them together and showing how, you know, together everything is more beautiful. Okay. I love, oh, I I love it. That's even cool. <laughs> yeah. that. Well Look said. That. <laughs> that made me extra happy that it was, I mean, obviously coincidence with the Aussie thing, but the uh, it's just mm -hmm. cool to see something that for us, you know, it's, it's, we don't, I mean, we've probably said it here before, I imagine, but we don't uh, participate in the, process of the label art or the 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 beer itself so it's always extra fun to, for us mm -hmm. to see what everybody comes with and uh this was a really fun surprise because obviously no one's ever done this for link up before so yeah, yeah. you know i've yeah. never had a new england xba before i don't believe <laughs> yeah i would have in like an in one that was intentionally sort of produced and marketed as such Defin yeah. definitely mm -hmm. not so yeah well, oh, that's very cool <laughs> I actually I mean, like that too. That and we ended up, sorry, uh, twice having. I don't know if the second time there we had a cold IPA for the first time too, and that's part of Link Up. So I just feel like the Link Up is also like everyone's kind of really being creative and doing like different styles and kind of keeping things interesting too in that way a yeah. lot of the time. And I love that. That was Warshak did the. Oh, nice. oh cool! Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's great. Love, love all these fun styles. So yeah, I think you were saying, Cole, were you? Uh... Yeah, with the label. So with yeah, this one, uh, Yobi's known for you know a lot of our uh, really fun art and characters and such. Uh, but with this one, we found that we didn't really want to detract from the um, from the whole reason we were making this beer in the first place and kind of really bring it to the forefront. And the minimalist label also kind of works well. Where uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Focuses all on this really wants to see you. Yeah. Um, but with this label, uh, we, we found especially, you know, it, it doesn't have a ton of information on it. So it really kind of sparks that conversation. So our customers can come in and say, hey, uh, this beer looks a little different than the others. What's up with that? Uh, and it gives us the opportunity to really, you know, feature everything that LinkUp does and, you know, what it stands for and, you know, how we're trying to support this organization. Yeah, okay. just to go off what Cole was saying, like you guys saw, and if people who haven't been to our brewery before, uh, when you walk into our retail space, all of the beers that we have in the fridge are displayed. So a customer approaches our, our retail staff and they have a vast variety of beers to choose from. They know the caricatures, the octopus, the canuck, the pompous, and it's, you know, it's all fun and kitschy. And we really wanted this one to be, um, to stand out. We didn't want to mask it with anything differently. We wanted to right. have people ask, what is Link Up? 
and then have our staff start that conversation because that's really what um, I think you guys are doing with your organizations. You're starting conversations across breweries across Ontario, and that's kind of something that we wanted to um, make happen with this label. So that's why we decided to do what we did here. Amazing. Yeah, I love that so much. Yeah, that's really clever. And on that, I know it hasn't been that long since it dropped. How did, I mean, I know you guys maybe aren't physically, personally in the, the tap room like that, but have you either seen or sort of heard about, has it been able to do that as such? Like have people be like, hey, what's this one about from mm -hmm. what you've heard? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've had a couple of events since we've released it as well. And, you know, people are, especially because we have the really fun um, tap, uh, tap handle. handle as well. That's, that's yeah. very unique yeah. compared to all of them. I love seeing that. Yeah. 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 Um, it has been something that's sparked conversation. And to be honest, it's been very popular as well, which has been great. So. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect beer for the weather too, as yeah. it's, I mean, not yeah, like, today, so but uh, it's, it's about to heat back up again. And I forgot about the tap handle. So if people don't know, we uh, we sent a couple of tap handles out to um, to Great Lakes so that both the Toronto and the Etobicoke um, pubs, the tap handles there. And it looked extra sick, at least at Etobicoke, because there's, you guys have got like 20 taps or something crazy like that. Yeah. And it just, it, like they're all the same tap. And then that just stands out. And that, that was such a cool idea that uh, you guys brought to us to do that. Yeah, um, and, and I love the amazing. way the can stood out too. It yeah, really did. Somebody walked in. I was like, oh, oh my in, gosh, like, look at that. Thing. Like, it was cool to see it. Even though I'd seen, we'd seen it on social, it was really cool. Everything you're explaining is exactly our experience as kind of yeah. drinkers coming into the pub. And we saw the tap and like, wow, what's that about? And then you see the link up. Yeah, okay. Well, I got some questions. Here. What's this yeah. all about? There you go. There you go. It worked. It worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys think you guys are in marketing or something? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so first question, as as we always start off with, like, you know, I'd love to know why. Obviously, if people have been following Great Lakes, you've been around forever, like literally one of the first breweries in the province. Um, what about specifically the Link Up mission made you guys want to get involved with something like this? Yeah, so I'll take this. Um, so yeah, back when you reached out to us, Craig, we I was very excited to hear from you because obviously Link Up is an organization that I personally have looked into before, and we were really searching for a way for Great Lakes to get connected and um, support the BIPOC community. Because uh, as a brewer, we've done a lot of other charity initiatives. We're a very community based uh, brewery here in Etobicoke. We have a lot of great community partners and. I think that there was something missing that we just weren't touching on yet. And that was um, how the craft beer scene is not all inclusive to all people all the time and wanted to figure out how we can change that, how we can do our part and who we could reach out to for support. And when you reached out to us, it was like the perfect um, happenstance that it just kind of fell into our laps. Like, yes, this is exactly who we're looking for, who we want to learn from, who we want to partner with. And, just everything that you guys are doing is just phenomenal. And I think it's something that we can really learn from. Um, so that's kind of why we were on board in a second. That's awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember we had that first convo with Troy who we'd, we had on the pod before. And uh, I remember you guys were just both super enthusiastic about it. And I felt like uh, that you know, seemed to run through the, the core of the company. Mm -hmm. and, and it shows that, and it's more than just about link up though. Like obviously you guys have done this before. And we, we, I said this to you when you first mentioned it and uh, we would just talk about it off air briefly, but one of the things that you got us to do was to actually have a, uh, just a short presentation to your staff about link up. So that particularly the staff who would be uh, in the tap room and, and talking directly to customers uh, and probably some other folks as well, but just to explain what's going on. And this is something that Tiff and I had never, um, done before yeah. with any of the breweries in any of the series. And I thought that was such a cool way to sort of almost like take more ownership over the participation in something like this so i'd love to just hear so obviously this was a not you know you, you gave us some example decks that we were able to sort of mimic and, and move from yeah. there so obviously it w was not the first time I'd, you know where did that idea come from and what what sort of impact has doing that uh, had on the work that you've done both with the the different charities or non-profits as well as on the team yeah, so this kind of started, I want to say, um, shortly after COVID. Um, if people don't know, like we typically do a handful of charity brews throughout the year. Uh, like I mentioned before, we have a lot of great community partners here in Etobicoke. Uh, for example, we do a charity beer for the Jean Augustine Center for Young Women's Empowerment, and we brew a beer for them called Empowered. 
and a dollar from each can goes back to the center where they put on incredible programs for these young girls to go to after school. And it's, you know, it's all about um, being empowered, how they can uh, navigate through this world and just giving them different life skills. And we have a lot of different organizations that we deal with and we are, we were brewing the beers, we were selling them through the tap room, but the conversation just wasn't there. Mm. And we thought, how can we learn more from our partners? How can we actually understand where this money is going to and how we're, um, how we're impacting these programs. And that's why we started asking uh, the charity partners that we work with, hey, do you mind taking an hour out of your day to come down and talk to our staff, the people who are selling the, the beer to our customers or to our licensee bar accounts? Like, we'd really like to know as much as we can to see if there is anything more we can do. And uh, that's what we started running these uh, hour long info sessions where like you guys uh, so wonderfully did, uh, came in and chatted about how LinkUp started, um, what the mission is, what the, like the purpose is and how, what we're doing by just making this beer really supports your cause in the long run. Very cool. Such yeah. a good experience. And I love the, um, again, like what Craig said, ownership, but a lot the intentionality behind it too, because mm -hmm. you're really equipping your staff to speak well to the beer. So it's one thing to have it there, but it's another thing to be like, oh, I'm excited. I did hear some of the co-founders actually speak about it. Now I'm armed to also take ownership and speak about it as well, which I just love so much. And like, it actually made me feel like that's something we should actually just proactively be doing. Um, yeah, I mean, but it, I it, love that you did that. And it also gives our staff, you know, a, a way to kind of feel a lot more connected with the beer as well. Because it's not just the people in the front selling it that are, you know, a part of it. It's everybody in the process, right? And they get to feel more connected to the organization and to the cause that we're trying to support and really feel better about what they're doing as well, right? Yeah, Absolutely. very, very cool. And particularly, I feel like it ties into kind of what you both were just saying before about the extra sort of ways that you drew attention to it in the tap room. So, you know, you've gone out of your way to come up with the ideas to, to hey, give us a tap handle and hey let's make the label different so that people talk about it so mm -hmm. then if people go ask all the questions and the staff aren't equipped with that information and aren't able to sort of adequately you know let me just check the can what was this about again you know yeah. They're, yeah. they're able to sort of answer that question like confidently and just be like hey this is what it's about and people are like ah sweet let's go um yeah. i really yeah we really like that a lot and then we you know told the rest of the team they thought that was super cool so i think that's, that's really uh cool. something that we'll we'll try like to if, I agree. I think we should yeah. try and like bring that in. It's just such a, a great idea. At least we can offer it. Might not I think we can offer it at least in the minimum. Okay. So what happens often in these conversations, we also end up workshopping things that we're like, Oh, we're going to implement into our process yeah. later. So that's what you're seeing. Well. Um, but I was like at the, at the minimum, we could include the deck with the key points, like a one sheet. That's like a, a one sheet for sales and, and retail, like any of that. Yeah. Type of thing. So that way, at least they have it and can refer to it easily if they don't have time to have us. Also, you all are like larger too. So you do have these like sessions where sometimes it's a smaller team that we're working with too so maybe yeah. just yeah. one person that would do with having it you know handy that's a good point um, i guess you guys were able we did a couple of sessions to be able to split because yeah. obviously you can't pull everybody off the floor oh, yeah. right? <laughs> wants to be like, sorry everyone's talking to these folks <laughs> <laughs> no beer sorry yeah, no. Guys. um no i love it so like i'd love to hear about some of the other initiatives you guys have done because obviously you've done this many times before uh with you know whether it's like um with producing a beer for, for a, a nonprofit or, or otherwise, just some of the things that maybe if, if uh, some of the, maybe let's say, I'd love to hear some of the wins, some of the cool things that you've done and how that, you know, the different um, activations maybe is the word, you know, maybe there's, like you said, you've done a lot of events and things like that. Maybe there's some things that you could sort of share that other breweries, if they're listening, could be like, Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe we could do something like that to you know, amplify the collaboration with the, with the charity. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, you have okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think like I mentioned before, we're we are very focused on our community here in Etobicoke. We really want to help support the people who are supporting us and who have supported us. So something unique that we do is we try and focus on local Etobicoke um, community charity organizations. So okay. something that really stood out to me uh, when you first asked this question was, our most recent charity partner is uh, a woman's shelter uh, just north of Etobicoke that we have done uh, brew for uh, two years now. And the first year we did it, it was a huge success. Um, these these women um, who, who work for the shelter are just so phenomenal. 
And we uh, additionally, we ran a, um, a clothing drive, a clothing and women's uh, hygiene products. And we just had a box sitting in our tap room said, hey, we have this beer, but if you have any, you know, clothing items, feminine hygiene products, you know, anything like that. And the hordes of donations we were getting were just amazing to see. So um, there's people coming and they said, oh, you guys have a box here? I'm just going to run to Costco. I'm going to pick up a bunch <laughs> of stuff and I'm going to come and drop it off because we're Love right that. next to Costco. <laughs> and it was, it was a phenomenal um, thing to witness to see how us supporting um, a community organization and then getting support from our community to support that person. It was just this whole domino effect. So it was really cool. And that's something that I think we really strive to is to create those connections within our community. So I would definitely suggest and recommend to other breweries who want to be more involved in, you know, uh, producing a beer or doing something, uh, an outreach program is to see who's in your neighborhood, who maybe you can partner with and, and link up with and <laughs> do something amazing <laughs> to, to, you know, it's just, it's more than beer, right? That, and that's what yeah. we kind of reiterate. It's, we're more than just a beer company. We want to be, um, you know, your community partner and, and your friend. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. and it did feel like that. I'll say, like on the other side, as a partner, it did feel like you all really, really cared, and you all really like. Yeah, it felt like not like, a, hey, can you do this? And you're like, sure, okay. It felt very like, all right, let's do this. How are we going to make sure you integrate? How are we going to educate the staff? How are we going to make sure everything looks good mm -hmm. so people want? It's just yeah, it it feels really good. So. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the idea of keeping it local as well, and I feel like you mentioned like you know being tapped in with the community and being a friend, and I feel like that's always really what a brewery is. Like mm -hmm. it's like a community place that people congregate. So mm -hmm. it's a hub. It, yeah, a hub, a community hub. Exactly. That's what Cheers. Cheers was about. I, mean, I, I don't know why I brought up Cheers all of a sudden, but I'm like, I've, I've literally never watched one Neither episode. I. I watched Cheers. <laughs> That's where Cambridge. everybody knows your name, right? Exactly. That exactly. The... But that was supposed to be the whole thing where everybody goes and you're supposed to care about each other and we shouldn't lose that. And I feel like that's the ethos that's being kept, which is really important. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast before and they were saying that the Blue Zones in, you know, the Blue Zones in different parts of the world that have the longest lifespan, one of the key things that they have in common aside from you know no processed food and uh you know just being in the sun and blah 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 was a sense of community and maybe mm. a responsibility for each other so not only is it good for good for the community good for the brewery but it's good for the individual literally to feel apparently i learned this today uh to feel connected to that community wow. maybe yeah. not indebted but like you know it's my duty mm -hmm. to give back to that and that you know makes everyone feel good there's nothing feels better than giving so it's it also comes down to if we support them they'll support us right you know we, we all help yeah. each other out you know you know sometimes yeah. we have our own difficulties and being able to get through that together makes us stronger in the end right mm -hmm. absolutely 100%. couldn't agree more yeah i love that i think that's a really good thing so it's like what the other thing i think i took out of that is that you made it very obvious what was happening like you said you had the beer but you had like the box there to be like hey mm -hmm. taking donations I think that's really clear as well to make it very clear what you're doing and where, where these things are going, mm -hmm. which is really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. I always like it. Was, and obviously this kind of what you were saying earlier, Denise, about how this was, it aligned with what you guys are already doing. I, I like that too, because this might not be a, a particular uh, cause. I mean, hopefully it would be, but for everybody, but even if there's a brewery, it's something that just you care about. Maybe you have whatever personally affected by something that there is a nonprofit that can help fix that issue like lean into that type yeah. of thing and just sort of, yeah partner with that okay that's amazing so i know you were doing have you done like events as much because i know we sort of early days we sort of spoke about it tiff and i were out of town for the mm -hmm. the most of the link up series unfortunately so we weren't able to do that but i'd love the idea of a um an event it sounds like you guys have done that before where you've actually sort of done these collaboration beers and then had a supporting sort of event something happening mm -hmm. yeah that's something that's a little bit new for us still like um one of the things that we were talking about uh, this year uh you know the, there's so many different charities we want to be able to support and work with um and i mean it's nice to make a beer and everything uh but you know it we really want to find a way to really feature them and make it stand out among you know the sea of other you know things that we could be doing right so uh, one of the, the good things that we could do is, you know, bring an event alongside the beer to really, uh, you know, bring the attention and support of the community to 
uh, you know, a more centralized focus and, you know, sell the beer in addition. Um, it's still something we're working on, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, especially, you know, coming out of the pandemic, you know, yeah. it's, it's been very difficult to kind of, of find, you know, that toe that line of, you know, okay, we're we doing too much. Oh, can we, you know, can we do all these things back to back? Are people starting to get tired of constant, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> being drawn out to social activities. Right. But, uh, yeah, but um, like in the last few months, we've um, we've gained this incredible internal events coordinator, and mm-hmm. she is so full of fantastic ideas that we've actually had a few really fun events here at the brewery that are for like an organization, mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like um, like a like charity event. Um, just mm-hmm. off the top of my head, a couple of weeks ago, we did a, a fetch and release dog yes. social, <laughs> and we had. Um, um, this organization that has all of these adopt all these dogs up for adoption and people came out they were having beer they were playing with the puppies and the hopes were that all these dogs would get adopted so that is so cool it was so great it's and so it was fun. like how can we use our space in the facility that we have here and and host um host an event that focuses mm-hmm. around an organization that you know again sparks a conversation but also feels very um organic and very um like inclusive and it doesn't have to be, Oh, I don't know anything about this. So I can't go. It can be like, no, this is a fun social Saturday thing. We're going to go and have a beer at Great Lakes and we're going to learn about something new. Like it's very, Mm. um, trying to make it open for everyone. So I think Mm. as uh, we progress and as the summer picks up, I definitely think that that's something we're going to see more of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I met her. She's awesome. She has great energy and our dog loved her. Oh, that was, yeah. (laughs) Cause I was actually going to bring it up while we were talking. Cause I was like, she was super proud of it and we were talking about it and she did mention it was like to, you know, encourage adoption. And then I think she said there was even like another dog party that kind of happened. Like other people who just had dogs in general. Yeah. We also had like labels customized with like the little pictures of the dogs and their bios in the back. Oh, this is awesome. I want all of these. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so cute. And I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything to do with dogs. Because we're saying we're coming back for sure. And like, we're just going to hang out on the patio at least. And then, yeah. you know, we can bring our dog yeah. and we feel good about that too. So I just love that. And she had like, yeah, really great energy. So I, I'm not surprised yeah. she's filled with ideas. You could tell she felt like excited oh, she was and like had ownership. Super stoked and to then, see Yeah. Her. And then Barrington, our dog was just like, wouldn't leave her alone. So yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> One of the great things about our space as well is we're trying to improve the accessibility and kind of uh, inclusivity of it quite a bit as well to really kind of make everybody feel like they can be welcome in our space, mm-hmm. right? You know, the simple things like making it uh, more wheelchair accessible or, mm-hmm. you know, having, uh, you know, uh, representation uh, through the form of like stickers and things like that to let everybody know that this is a safe space, uh, having our code of conduct uh, posted uh, everywhere with, you know, a line to drop if somebody ever feels unsafe or marginalized or, you know, ever, you know, needs someone to reach out to, you know, those kind of things really to support our community because, you know, ultimately we want to attract as much of our community to the brewery as we can, yeah. right? Of course. Yeah, and it does, yes. and it feels good when you walk in there. And I think we'll talk about hiring and things in a second, but I'll say even like walking in, I met Tristan. I believe that's his name was Tristan. And it's just mm-hmm. so cool to see someone who's a very tall black guy selling the, be- who poured us the beers. Yes. And like, it was super cool. It's just, and we talked about Florida for a second and stuff like that. But like, even as somebody, when you come in and it's like, I have a dog and you guys have the friendly dog friendly thing. And then there's someone who looks like me that's like there too. It just feels, and then everyone's also just very smiley and happy in general too. So yeah. everyone, it was just a good vibe. The sun was also shining. It was great. <laughs> it, was good, it was just uh, really uh, great. Uh, um, we had somewhere to be. We would have stayed there. Yeah, we had somewhere to be. Did. And then we had a meeting actually. Yeah. And we're like, we're just going to drink this beer and then we're going to go. But um, it was, uh, it just feels really good. So if that's the intention, I'll tell you that like you feel that as you're walking in so it's awesome. really really good really good that's a great, great. point mm-hmm. yeah it, it really did feel like that as well I, I i love that a lot and even something small like if you look like the inclusivity we've when you had the pup for like 10 months and we're sort of new to it with you know like i know canada seem compared to florida where we just were like you can take the, him everywhere and no one cares but literally here, everywhere yeah Sorry, it's, it was insane it's like to the point where really like it's okay <laughs> Like people with German shepherds in the supermarket. Not, wow. I'm serious. Like they just didn't. Yeah. It was lit and they were fine. Everything was fine. It was great. Awesome. But like yeah. it was really cool for us as someone that's like just become now something, something that's just important to us. We want, we take him everywhere. So like it would be difficult for us to go somewhere where he wasn't welcome. You know, fortunately it's summer now, patios and things like that. So it was very cool to see that you guys are not, you know, are leaning into that a lot and 
obviously over the last couple of years a lot more dogs were adopted um over COVID, mm-hmm. so there's a lot oh, more yes. people with that so therefore people are looking for dog friendly experiences so on top of all of the other things the inclusivity whether it's accessibility or um, diversity um, ethnically with you know just allowing people with pups you know i love that i think it's really cool it, and it was a great experience when we were there yeah speaking of the stuff that you just mentioned tiff that was a good segue because that's where i was going next um one of the challenges for craft beer is just the talent pool the diversity of the talent pool sorry um depending on where the brewery is located you know and the the demographics of that particular city town area whatever that would obviously depend on um who's applying for the jobs and that's one of the biggest challenges obviously we've got the drinker side that you guys are proactively working towards with all these different events and and community collaborations and just you know obviously you you're a legendary brewery so it's that helps a little more as well of course but there's always that challenge of when you put out a job ad and you know you get who you get type of thing so you guys are in etobicoke obviously it's just you know gta it's just you know basically toronto um what what's the organic talent pool looking like when you guys put out a job ad if you have any insight into this um generally speaking Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've spoken to um, our, our tap room manager about this because um, I used to work in the tap room uh, during the pandemic and I, you know, I saw what it was like and we weren't getting a lot of, we didn't have a lot of people um, with like a BIPOC individual or anyone from a minority group working in the tap room. And it was something that bothered me as one of the only women who were working down there. It's like, why is it all guys that I'm working with? Like, I love them. They're all wonderful people, but what can we do to, to mix it up down here? And I think it's something that we're still learning how to navigate. Uh, we are trying to um, update our job postings mm-hmm. online to make them uh, more inclusive, to attract a more diverse um, applicant, and just trying to ask questions about what we can do as a brewery to, to have people who maybe didn't think that Great Lakes were somewhere that they wanted to work to, to get them in the door. And I think that's something that a lot of places struggle with. Um, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think that's definitely something that uh, we're still learning from. And uh, we are getting a lot more applicants here and at the brew pub downtown, Mm -hmm. uh, which is great because obviously Toronto is very busy. There's so many people in the service industry looking for work. Um, Then I don't know if Cole can speak to the production side. Yeah, no, I I think that's definitely been something that we've been very much, you know, keeping an eye on. Even something as simple as like, having a job description in a certain way that has like a subconscious bias to the way it's worded or, you know, uh, having uh, things that are like antiquated um, uh, like descriptions of like what, what's necessary to be able to do the job that can be a little bit exclusionary. Mm-hmm. Um, it really kind of going through the fine tooth comb and approving simple things like that, but also like accessibility of where you post the jobs, right? You know, that's something that, um, you know, we've really been, you know, looking t- to, improve on as well, right? To, to make sure that, you know, everybody has access to be able to see these postings and have an opportunity to, you know, have a, a career here. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. We On on that, actually, it's a, I'm glad you brought that up, the inclusivity of the job ads. We did a document with the CCBA that's mm-hmm. released on their website that is guidelines that in collaboration with their, like an HR firm. Um, right. mm-hmm. and they created that to be able to things just like instead of must be able to lift 50 pound bag there's a that's you know a another one. way to word mm-hmm. i forgot what the yeah. actual example is but that's available on the ccba website right now if anyone wants to go grab that we're gonna um mm-hmm. do a blast about that as well and put up on nice. our site too but like it, it's really important it's actually something that you don't realize that maybe would I'll like either exclude people maybe gender wise like oh i don't know if i can lift that but like you know it's okay there's other ways around it it's not necessarily mm-hmm. about having to lift that bag on your shoulder mm-hmm. or whatever. um yeah that is definitely a really important thing and uh you're definitely right that a lot of breweries struggle with this and it's that's what we're all trying to work towards is just how do we bring more people in to mm-hmm to the beer industry and it seems like maybe one of the answers is just through the drinkers primarily because if people are just exposed to it they 
They'll be like, you know, when there's a job ad up or they'll just start looking and then they'll be like, oh, I like going to breweries. I feel cool at breweries. So let me see what's up. And all of a sudden, then you start diversifying from there. Then they'll tell their friends about it and share the beers and mm-hmm. maybe like, hey, my grandma used to make this dessert. That could be fun for a beer. Like, oh, wow, never thought about that. And all of a sudden you just get interesting situations. It's more reflective of the city that we live in, you know, yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Is, it, is it the most diverse city in the world? I think it is. Or multicultural. Definitely, I've definitely heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least one, probably, yeah. like top four. Yeah, or even if it's like not that. the. Yeah. Least. I was like, London's pretty multicultural, but it might go in. Maybe we have more different cultures, cultures here or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's you know. We're the melting pot. Wasn't that what yeah. it's called? Wait, melting no. Pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like geography. You're from like being like <laughs> high school, uh, but no, I definitely think that is an area is the the drinkers and then obviously mm. organizations. So partnering with Link Up and then even just like organizations outside of ours. So whether that be and that's something we speak to about too is like working with organizations that are not have, have nothing to do with beer. They're not thinking about beer at all, but maybe they have one significant base of people. So like my mom's part of the Jamaican association. So, you know, partnering with them for an event, for example, will bring that audience. Like I've converted my mom to craft beer. I converted my dad to have like, uh, I won't say his age cause he doesn't like it, <laughs> yeah. but to like have this man who drank Heineken's and Guinness his entire life drink craft beer is like incredible is an incredible he thing and he likes it he enjoys it so like having those opportunities i think that's like all the branching out that needs to happen to expand um and then expansion of the drinkers hopefully leads to expansion of the workforce as well so that's one of the focuses that we're having to we're also thinking if there's ways to post you know kind of pair multicultural food and drinks then we yes. end up oh, like yeah. bringing in that food bait people you know they're attracted to the food then you're like hey it's great with this beer and then hopefully you start getting them more interested in the beer side yeah, of things. So those are all the well especially kind of fun. tying back to this beer I, I would actually recommend going with a curry with this beer because there's a lot of really kind of like great flavors that you can blend with the the spices and uh nice. the hot profile you know the more the fruity and the spicy really kind of complement each other quite nicely so awesome that's a good call oh and my gosh how amazing i literally <laughs> made curry yesterday oh you did hey so there you go you're having curry wings tonight I well there we go yeah. Ooh, that sounds really there you good. Go. yeah, yeah. Well, so well, there you go well, uh, <laughs> You know, to pop up another can and uh... uh, <laughs> I have a few more. Um, that's awesome. That's very, very cool. Yeah, I love um, that. Through yeah. food. That's a really good point. Is anything through food and stuff? That's yeah. mm-hmm. that's great. Um, if there's, is there anything that, how I say it, like if you were to say to any other breweries, sort of because you've done this for so long, you guys have had so many, you know, successful collaborations that you guys seem to have, you know, started to, like you guys are saying it's a work in progress and i definitely get it but it definitely feels like you're also very comfortable and you have sort of you know a nice rhythm going and you know what uh what works for you guys if there's anything that you would say to another brewery that might be watching that did what would work the best oh, what how I, what the, i said this in the last episode as well it was i don't know why i can't you're like any exact. tips to help uh, yeah, maybe. like what's the best way to it? People that that's probably more. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if it was more like what? Um, oh, Barrington's waking up. If I'm stumbling, I apologize. If there was no, a, okay. a way, Weird. like <laughs> encouraging a brewery. This is what I'm trying to freaking say. Uh, encouraging a brewery to who, who might be hesitant to maybe. Ah, oh, like should I do it? I kind of like I don't know. I don't know. Like what would you say? Whether whether it's tips or what could you say to sort of maybe encourage someone to be like you know what like you know, take a dive into this little world and, and, you know, try and bring in some new people. I mean, the easiest thing is just start the conversation, right? Just reach out and start chatting, say, Hey, I work for so-and-so uh, brewery and i really like what you guys are doing. Would you be interested in collaborating? You know, collaboration is not something that's new to the brewing world. You know, breweries do it with each other all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, why can't we collaborate culturally as well? Right. You know, we have a similar group of people that we, uh, you know, are, are um, catering to, we should work together, right? Yeah. For and you, us, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and you never know, like, who you're going to affect by branching out and doing something different. I think there's a lot to say, you know, craft beer has been in, stuck in its ways for so long and kind of on this one path, but you need to start uh, taking those risks and doing things because you never know who it's going to affect it trickle down to someone in the community who's maybe been, you know, feeling like they can access this space, but has always wanted to. And mm-hmm. I think for us personally, like I'm just going to speak for the uh, Cole and I, 
Uh, we're a part of a committee here at Great Lakes. We, uh, us and a few other members, uh, the Jedi Committee, Justice, Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. And um, we have like full-time jobs. This is something that we want to do on the side of, uh, you know, our nine to five because we wanted to connect the people who work here and connect the people that um, come through our doors and make sure that it's something that we're proud to see. You know, we want our brewery to be an inclusive space for all. And we want to be proud to work here. So um, that doesn't always come from the top down. That sometimes starts from the bottom up, right? The people who are working hard on the floor, on the lines, they want to see the change happen first because they're seeing it day to day. And I think, um, you know, since we're not the owners of a brewery and we don't have the final say, but we, we know a lot of what's going mm -hmm. on and we yeah. hear a lot of the chatter uh, on the ground level. And I think opening the conversation up to your staff would be huge because you never know what people mm -hmm. are thinking and have ideas on. And mm -hmm. it's uh, the Jedi committee was a, a something that just sparked again out of COVID. And it's something that we're really passionate about and are going to continue to grow, I think throughout the year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, That's awesome. I love that so much. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's great advice for yeah. uh, for other breweries. Thank you guys so much. You have to be willing to have those conversations. That's really important, you know. Be and willing I think to listen. Just... Yes, that's, the, that's, that's important. A big part. Listen to what everybody has to say because ultimately the people that work here are the brewery, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's Very actually important. making it known that it is a safe space to bring up things because, of course, there's like staff, all employees, they're having thoughts about things all the time. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, and it's, it's not better. easy, right? It's, yeah. it, it has to start somewhere, though. Yeah. So. 100 yeah. percent love that no i love it and one of the things that always bothered me as uh you know we own our own business but when i was working for different companies that, that the managers never really understood they always forget what it's like to do the frontline job so mm -hmm. to be able to just remember that if you're a brewery owner perhaps and maybe you're not in the tap room every day and seeing it to be like hey these people are so they actually have some really, really valuable insight as to what can help the business and what can help the customers and the community around it. So listening mm -hmm. is like, you know, like everyone just said, is super, super key. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I love that. This is great. You guys are fantastic. I knew this would be cool. <laughs> uh, thank you both so much for, uh, for hanging out and for really, you know, for first of all, being so passionate and, and down for the collaboration, first of all, but also just for taking your time to hang out with us tonight and share these insights. Cause this is what this podcast series is about. Like, obviously we do all the other stuff where we're talking to breweries and, and it's, it's yeah. fun and mm -hmm. telling stories is great. And I'm thinking, you know, we really just want this to be like information sharing and just sort mm -hmm. of maybe just, it might just spark something in somebody listening and that can therefore help the whole, the community as a whole. And the brewing community is one of the more tighter knit communities where you know, yeah. businesses yeah. actually help each other. <laughs> right you know if you need something you can call a, a local brewer and you know, someone nearby and they'll hook you up it's not like a, a bad thing to have a brewery park oh yeah like I'll, I'll talk to some friends that work for other businesses and they'll be like wait you guys work with the competition like yeah we we all work yeah. together to build a stronger you know, community right yeah and strangely enough it works it's it's a very yeah. unique environment so it's uh it's really cool and i i really we really appreciate you guys just sharing that knowledge and we know that the you know, uh, industry people listen to get that information. So we're hopefully mm -hmm. that this is like a source for that. And, you know, even over the years, the way people listen to podcasts, it's not always consumed when it drops. It might be six months, 12 months, mm -hmm. years perhaps, but mm -hmm. the information is still super valid. And someone in a couple of years time might hear this and be like, Oh, wow, we could, we could do that. And it, you know, th there's impact. So we very much appreciate uh, both you yeah. two and just the whole great lakes team for just, being legends first of all but also for you know just getting down with us and like we said it generally does mean a lot it's very cool we're just you know big fans yeah. of uh of everything you guys are doing and it was it, it's very cool this feels almost like full circle coming you know one of the first breweries i tried in ontario and coming back and then working with you guys like that it's uh, very very special to us so awesome. thank you again yeah, yeah thank you for having well, us. yeah thank yeah. you guys for like all the work that you've done and are doing and for including us in this wicked and educate project us. yeah you know like we, we learned a lot from you too and we really appreciate that and we're yeah. bringing yeah. forward and looking forward to you know strengthening and continuing the relationship it's just oh, make you going. yeah many, many things that we're doing so i appreciate yeah. you both very much um now stick around at the end we're going to wrap everything up and then we'll uh we'll finish up off air just say goodbye but uh once again thank you both where can everybody find great lakes online and in person yeah, so we have uh, two locations, um, like you mentioned. The uh, first one is in Etobicoke. 
uh, 30 Queen Elizabeth Boulevard. That is the brewery and tap room. And then we have uh, the GLB Brew Pub, which is located uh, downtown Queens Key and Lower Jarvis. Um, and then you can find us on Instagram at Great Lakes Beer, uh, Twitter as well, uh, and our website, www.greatlakesbeer.com. Love it. And if you're in Ontario, you can order anything, uh, get it shipped directly to yeah. your door. And if uh, there's yeah. any link up left by the time this drops, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might be long gone by then. But if it is, yeah, well, you can. I'm taking yeah. the last few cases of me home tonight. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. <laughs> it's over. It's over. But there's plenty of other stuff to get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, thank you both so very, very much. Um, this is the final episode of this series from Series 5. So this has been uh, a fantastic series as usual. We'll be back with the next uh, series in the next one starts in July this year, 2023. So we'll see you guys back then for the next link up episodes. But obviously, we're going to have our regular uh, episodes in the meantime. So, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell Ding. so you know when the new drops. Follow us everywhere at Beer Was Podcast. Check out the long form audio. We drop every Wednesday. And now we are back from Florida. Oh, it's on point. We are not going to mess a week. God damn it. Um, and uh, if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of that, podcasts are everywhere. Give us a little five star rating. And do, don't do it for us. Do it for. Do it for Cole and Denise. Do it for Great Lakes. <laughs> do it for diversity. Okay, well. You know the vibes. There's pressure now. There's pressure. Um, appreciate everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs>